Hello, my awesome second grade artist. Today we're starting a new project and we're gonna be using some new materials. So it's gonna be lots of fun. We're gonna be creating these Heather Goller inspired flowers in a vase. We're gonna talk a, bit, a little bit about the artist Heather Goller and our supplies that we're gonna be using. But first, and teachers, this is in your lesson plans. I want you to find the video, Abstract Flower Art by artist Heather Goller, Modern Folk Art on YouTube, and let the students watch that. It'll give them some examples of some of Heather's artwork. And so they kind of get an idea of what we're doing. But these are some examples. Heather Goller is an American artist who paints with oil, acrylic, and mixed media. So she uses lots of different types of materials and she creates cheerful folk art paintings. Folk art is a type of art where the artist wasn't trained in school, they just sort of taught themselves. And sometimes it has a simple look, but it looks really pretty, I think. And I love the colors, and the bright bright colors that she uses in her artwork. She does painting, she makes ceramic tiles, she makes jewelry, and so she does lots of things. She lives in Austin, Texas. Let's look at this map. We live here in Mississippi. She was first born in New York, which is way up north, New York, but now she lives in Austin, Texas. So this is Texas. So we're Mississippi, she's Texas. We're not that far apart. So she's a contemporary artist, which means she is still alive and working. So we're gonna do ours based sort of on what she does, and we're gonna be using neon watercolors. They're liquid watercolors, but they're neon. So they're gonna be very bright and pretty. And there's gonna be a little bit different technique with this. We're going to create some painted paper for our leaves, and we're gonna use our paint daubers to draw our circles for our flowers and our vases. And it's gonna be lots of fun. So before we start, I'm gonna show you three examples I made. They're all gonna be vases with the flowers, but you can make different shapes for your vases. So I've got this one that's more of a round one with polka dots. And then you're gonna have your vase sitting on a table and you're gonna put patterns on the vase and the table. So you see my pattern, patterns are shapes or lines or colors that repeat over and over again. So I've got polka dot pattern on that vase and stripes on that table. Here's another one where I made the vase look like a long rectangle and I put stripes as my pattern on the vase and polka dots as my pattern on the table. You need to choose very, very simple patterns. Teachers only let the students do very simple patterns because with the daubers, you can just only draw so much. And here's one more where I made a different shape vase and I did stripes and dots again. So you'll get to decide what shape vase you want. All right, we're gonna get started. You're going to start with a piece of watercolor paper that's already cut. You can put your name label on the back. And teachers, there's two ways to do this and you'll have to decide what's easiest and best for your students. I'm gonna be showing how to directly paint on the paper with the dauber. So, if you feel comfortable and if you do a few of these and your students are doing okay with that, then you can do it this way. If your students are struggling, then you should have circle templates in your classroom and you can let the students use a pencil first and trace different size circles for the flowers and then go over it with their daubers and then they'll draw, they'll sort of just draw it out with pencil first. So if that's easier for your students, let them do it that way. Um, but I'm just going to show how to draw directly with the dauber, and that may be easier for your students. All right, so I'm going to find the middle of my paper, and I'm going to go just in this top part making circles. So you want to not make your circles too small because the paint daubers paint really thick. Teachers, remember when using these, they have to gently squeeze for it to come out, but they don't want to squeeze too hard. And this is just a mixture of tempera and a little bit of water to make it flow. So we're making different size circles and you're creating a bouquet of flowers. And kind of hang down there and down there. Maybe one more to kind of balance it out. 
Now, in some of your bigger circles, you can let the students make another circle. And in some of your smaller circles, you can let the students make some dots in the center. But don't do it in every one. Leave some of them blank so you have lots of variety. Okay, now we're gonna decide what we want our vase to look like. So, you know, I've shown you several examples. I'm gonna do a very easy rectangle shaped vase for this one. So I'm gonna just come down. I'm not gonna go all the way to the bottom. Come over some and make this. Another straight line down and then I'm going to connect them. And then remember, choose a pattern to go inside your vase, a very simple pattern. I'm gonna do horizontal stripes. Horizontal means they go across. Okay, maybe one more. Then I'm gonna make my table. So I'm gonna make a line. It's gonna stop every time you touch the vase because the table goes behind the vase. The vase is sitting on the table. Okay, so there is my table, and now I'm going to put a pattern on the table. I'm just gonna do dots, and all you have to do is gently squeeze and touch your dauber to the paper, and that's a really easy way to make dots. Okay, these will need to dry fully. While they're doing that, while they're drying, um, you're going to take one class period to make your painted paper for your leaves. So I'm gonna move this out of the way. Um, it'll be drying. And you're gonna take one class period. It can be the very first class period or it can be after you do your drawings. And you're gonna make painted paper. I'm gonna give you some pieces of poster board. They're gonna look, they're not gonna be really big. They're gonna be cut about like that. So you'll have these pieces of poster board and you're gonna let the students paint them to make our painted paper. And it's gonna be best if you do a variety of painted papers. So let them do it by class and they're not writing their name on this. This is just gonna be used for everybody. You probably don't even have to do this step with every single class because you can get a lot of leaves out of one sheet of paper. So you may just wanna pick a few of your classes who are ahead of other classes and let them do this. So in your lesson plans, teachers, I have written for you some different ideas for making painted paper. So remember, we can use salt and watercolor. So we're doing just greens and yellows and blues on this. These are our cool colors for it. Well, yellow is a warm color, but it mixes good with green. So we're using greens, yellows, and blues. You can do, you can let the students paint with liquid watercolor, sprinkle some salt on it, and let it dry, then push the salt away, and then you'll get a really neat texture. Texture, excuse me. This is one, this is a leaf that I've done that way, so it gives that really pretty texture. You can create some painted paper using your paint texture scrapers and tempera paint. You can use your texture brushes. Those are the brushes with the red handles, and you can let the students paint with your greens, blues, and yellows doing that. Or some of you have spray bottles that you can put liquid watercolor in and let the students spray them and create splatters. So make a variety of those. And when you think you have enough, you just put them aside and we're later gonna use those for our leaves, okay? All right, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna find one that has dried. So this is one of my drawings using the dauber that has dried. So the next step after it's dry is to use our watercolors, liquid watercolors, and paint it. So I've got a, a container of water. I've got my brush. This red brush with a flat end will be fine for this and paper towel for drying it. Remember, as the students um, change colors each time, they need to wash their brush. Have a center set up in your classroom for just for students who are painting. And begin by letting them just paint their flowers. So just pick one color for each area of the flower. I'm gonna wash that out. You may wanna actually go ahead and paint everything that, like if you're gonna do orange, go ahead and paint everything orange. So the fluorescent watercolors go on kind of thin and that's okay. It's pretty, see your paper through. Paint something purple over here. I think while I've got it, my purple on, I'll just go ahead and paint everything I'm gonna paint purple. 
We are not painting our vase and we are not painting our table. So those are gonna be left black and white like Heather Gallers looked. Now I'm gonna get some blue. It's very important that you wash your brush out. And the thing about this is it can get on the black and it's not gonna mess anything up. We're just painting that. Wash your brush out real good. Dry it with your paper towel. Okay. And let's see, I haven't used any of this pink yet. And I'm gonna do, got one little shape left here. Put that some orange in there. Okay, now they're going to paint their background. So they can choose whatever color they want. But the neat thing we're gonna do with the backgrounds is we're gonna layer them. And to layer the backgrounds, you will need to use two colors in the same family. So like two warm colors or two cool colors. I'm gonna do cool colors in my background this time. So I'm gonna start, I'm washing my brush out really good and I'm drying it off. I'm gonna start with a green. So I'm gonna paint my background green. Now you do need to be a little careful. I'm noticing when you paint over the black, try not to get it too much into it because it will, when that black tempera gets wet, it will try to come off a little bit. And if they get their brush in that too much, it will um, get on their, you know, in their colors that they're using. So I'm just going through here with my coat of green. And I've got to go in these spaces because a little background is showing through. Do this side. Remember, we're leaving our vase and our tablecloth white. It will give contrast. Contrast is when things are different. So everything isn't the same and it makes our artwork more interesting to have contrast. Okay. Let that dry. It really dries pretty quickly. If you have a hair dryer, you can speed it up. And I have hair dryers that I can bring to any teacher who might want one. So now what I'm talking about, that's pretty, but I think it looks even prettier when we layer that. So I'm gonna clean my brush out. I want to, I really would like to make sure this is dry. Mine's still a little wet. It'll do better when it's dry. So you may need to break this down into two steps. But remember I said, get a color in the same family. So blue is also a cool color. And blue, I know that blue and green mix well. So teachers, you will know what mixes well and what doesn't, and you'll have to help your students with that. So now I'm just gonna go over that with my blue. And because these are so transparent and so light, you see how what a pretty, it's making like a teal when, it, when those layers mix and it's just creating a really pretty color and just giving it a little extra dimension. That's why it's important that you layer the background. You don't have to layer the flowers, but I would like for you to layer the background. But they've got to be colors that are going to blend well together. So like pink and purple, um, the orange and the pink would do well, the blues and the greens, obviously, the red and the orange would do well. And I need to go in here just a little bit and get a little of that blue on my part in here. And you know what? I just see where I forgot to paint that. Did y'all notice that I forgot to paint that? I'm gonna go back in and do that. I'm gonna make it pink. Okay, now that needs to dry. So then the final step, because we're leaving this white, is to cut out your leaves. So you can let the kids do this in one class period and you could let the kids make a bunch of leaves or they can make their own leaves. They can make a bunch that they just share. But you see, I have this piece of paper. This was some salt and watercolor that I had paper and I just cut my leaf shapes out 
and they'll be nice and stiff so they'll glue down really nice with some Elmer school glue and you're just going to let the students go right on top and overlap with those leaves now one more step i almost forgot to tell you about actually before they put their leaves you can do it after but it may be easier i almost forgot this step is to go back in with some water i mean some oil pastels on the flowers and mine is still a little wet i'm gonna find some flowers that are um dry like that green's dry and i'm gonna take a green oil pastel and make some lines make some shapes so my flower kind of has some petals now it looks like it's got a pattern i'm gonna go with this blue and i'm actually gonna draw a flower shape in every flower i want you to use a similar oil pastel and make a design so glad I didn't leave this step out. Teachers, I'm sorry. It's still a little wet, but yours needs to be dry. I'm just making a circle there. Let the students be creative with this part. And then the leaves can go on. So you can do that, you can do this and then the leaves. And just let them glue right on top of it. Students, take your time. Make them look really good. And I cannot wait for your teacher to send these back and see what they look like. And I will see you next time. Bye.